Hi. Hi. Yeah, Kasia, Mark. Nice Hi, Kasia. to see you. Good to see you. Uh, we are at ID Tech Show 2018 in Berlin, and we are at the booth of First Graphene. Uh, so, guys, tell me, what, do you, what is the story of your company? Well, we, we start with the highest grade uh, graphite content possible. Right. 97% grade vein graphite from Sri Lanka. Okay. And we process it through our graphene cell technology for a very gentle way of converting it into high quality bulk graphene. Mm -hmm. So, lowest cost bulk best quality mm. and we're turning that into commercial products at the mm. moment and so is this your core advantage the fact that you're vertically integrated and you have access to high quality precursors? yeah the, the best grade gives us the lowest cost and that flows right. through to everything else that we're doing okay so, very great commercial advantage so what is the scale of your graphene operation today currently if we were to operate the maximum capacity, three shifts, Right. we could do 90 tonnes per annum. On a one shift basis, it's 25 uh, tonnes per annum. Um, so it's, it's quite significant in the, mm. in the world of graphene. It's a lot of graphene. Right. Right. And so we know graphene has all these wonderful properties, uh, but what are the key core markets that you guys are focusing on? What are the key applications? So, uh, we're, we're very focused on some, some of the high volume markets, so uh, we're, we've got some novel flame retardant uh, products that we have, so we're actually uh, formulating a uh, flame resistant coating for timber, uh, which is a significant market in uh, Australia and, and North America, so that's one area. Um, other areas include uh, concrete additives, where we're adding uh, our graphene to concrete to in increase the tensile and compressive strength of strength of concrete, um, and obviously we're also looking at um, conductive uh, additives in, in inks and coatings. We've also have a program with uh, uh, a university on plastics. We're looking at um, uh, in improved properties in plastics using our graphenes, and then the nice thing about first graphene is we also have some downstream. Uh, investments in technologies such as uh, supercapacitors, which are based on graphene oxide materials. So you know graphene never exists in isolation, you're always competing with another material, maybe different form of carbon. So maybe let's just focus on two target applications, this flame retardant yes. material and your supercapacitors. How do you differentiate from other non-graphene materials that are out there? Well, if, if, if you look at the flame retardancy market at the moment, that's really interesting. It's, uh, it's uh, in a difficult place right now because many of the very excellent performing um, flame retardant materials have been banned in Europe and, and, and North America. So the industry is looking for alternatives. The alternatives have to be non-toxic, uh, environmentally friendly. What we've shown with our, our fire retardancy uh, material is that you can, you can use graphene as uh, a flame retardant additive. And uh, this has also been covered recently in the Timber Trader uh, news magazine, uh, which is obviously focused on timber industry. But the advantage of graphene is uh, it, it's not um, falling foul of those changes in the, re in the regulatory status. So it, this is an industry that needs a solution and we believe graphene offers that solution. Right, and what about some of the, how do you address some of the other challenges in the industry? For example, the cost of production, uh, maybe your purity helps, but is there anything else you do? And also, Success has typically been associated with going a little bit closer to the customer, putting it into an ink or into a master batch. Yeah. So what is your strategy there? Well, we're getting a lot of our technologies from universities. Right. But the challenge is to get it out of universities, to scale it up and get into industry. So we're doing a lot of interface with industry, industry organisations. We need to lead them down the graphene path. Hmm. Every customer will, will have slightly different requirements, different finishes, different functionalization. So we have to get close to those industries and design something that suits them. That's mm. very much our, one of our key focuses at the moment. I see. 
And so let's fast forward five years. Where do you imagine your company to be? And also where do you imagine graphene as an industry to be? That's a big question. Um, so let's, let's take graphene as an industry. I think graphene uh, as an industry is still very much in, in the early phases. We are seeing some successes in commercialization with graphene, for example, graphene inks. Um, there's a strong push by the graphene manufacturing companies to move downstream and, and make those applications happen. Uh, I think that will continue and then we'll start to see uh, graphene materials being adopted in larger bulk markets such as plastics and concretes and construction materials. And I think that is when we'll start to see a real uh, growth in the value of graphene and the volumes of graphene that are being manufactured. Um, from a first graphene point of view, uh, obviously, as, as Warwick said earlier, we have this advantage of the very high quality graphite. The other advantage we have is we go from that ore, which comes out of the ground, uh, as you saw earlier, as a, as, a, as a lump of pure carbon, and we have a one-step exfoliation process which delivers graphene products, which we can then sort and, and finish into a range of different graphene materials, which will be suitable for conductive inks, fire retardancy, um, plastic additives. So I would expect to see First Graphene with a portfolio of graphene products and graphene-based products that are targeting those different industries in, in five years. Excellent, thanks very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Kasha. Thank you. Kasha, good to talk to you. Thank you, pleasure.